there's a uh, illustration I want to give you this morning of how this flesh and spirit thing works. And uh, this is how it was explained to me. And I don't know who explained it to me this way, but it's the best illustration, I believe. Um, how many of you own dogs? Anybody got some dogs? Not dog. You got dogs. You got a few of them. How many of them like to fight? Can I see your hands? They like to fight a little bit. Well, I've got one dog, so luckily I don't have that problem. He just likes to bite my leg. But the other uh, people in the room who you've got many dogs, most, maybe you know uh, that they like to fight a little bit. They like to um, aggravate each other. And uh, when I go to Pastor Sheila's house, she's got about three dogs, and uh, they aggravate each other and me at the same time. And um, I think they aggravate Pastor a little bit too, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, but what I've found is that if you've got different size dogs, normally what happens is the bigger dog ends up winning the battle. And the way that I heard this uh, illustration about the flesh and the spirit is it's like this. You've got two dogs. One is the flesh and one is the spirit. And whichever one you feed the most is the one that's going to end up winning the battle. Amen. Why? Because he's bigger. That's right. And in our lives, it's the same concept. When we begin to feed the flesh more than we feed the spirit, it ends up winning. It's so much easier to give in. Many of you, you've said this, God, this is the last time I'm going to do this. Anybody said that? Yes. I'm through after this. But then what ends up happening is you keep feeding the flesh and you fed it so much that when the temptation arises again, guess what happens? You can't withstand it and you end up giving in. Am I right? And it's so easy to go back to something that you're so used to. And what I want to talk to you about today, and this is our first point, is this. Our focus decides our vitality. In Romans 8, chapter 6, this, I mean chapter 8, verse 6 says this. It says, the, the mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. In other words, where you put your focus will determine how you live your life. Amen? Amen. What you focus on expands. Don't you, don't you realize that when you begin to focus on something, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it can become the big thing. It may start out as something very, very small. Anybody notice that in your life, that you, you begin to think of something, and it starts out as a small thing, but it ends up being this huge thing? Some of the husbands says, yes, I, I, know, what I'm, I know what you're talking about. My wife, she finds a small thing, and she makes it what? Men? Oh, nobody will say men because you got to go home with them today. I understand. I don't have to. So, um, so they end up blowing something up. It begins to expand. And what you focus on becomes your lifestyle. And what he's saying here is that the sinful mind is what? Death. And when you have this sinful mind that you think carnally all the time, in other words, you think like the world. Is it easy to think like the world? Most definitely, yes. Why? Because we live there. But Jesus said to be in the world, but not what? Of the world. In other words, be in it, but don't have the same mindset. Be in the world, but don't think like them. Be set apart. Be sanctified, which means to be set apart, to be holy, to be unlike this world. Paul said it in Romans 12, 2. He said, do not be conformed to what? This world. In other words, don't think like them, but be renewed in your mind. That's your reasonable act of worship that you offer yourself as a living sacrifice and that your mind is renewed. But here's the problem we have in the American culture is this, is that our mind isn't renewed. Right. We think that we can change outward behavior and that then we're okay. That's right. But where does it begin? Your behavior begins here. And your mind can be the most dangerous place on the world, in the world. Um, and it can cause you to do some things that, that you don't want to do. Paul said this. He said, the things I don't want to do, I end up doing. And the things I want to do, I don't find myself doing. But when you focus, when you, where you put your focus will determine your behavior. It will determine your lifestyle. It will determine the way that you live. And if you focus on what this world thinks, the problem is that we get so caught up in the way we dress, and the different things that we put on, we think about our outward appearance so much that we end up neglecting what's inside of us. 
And Jesus, and the, and the Bible says this, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? In other words, I need to be focusing on my heart a lot more than I'm focusing on what I'm wearing. Or, or whatever it may be. Different outward things that we focus on. And those things are important. So if you got your nails did this week, I'm happy for you. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but what I am saying is that a lot of times we neglect what's going on internally. And if we'll begin to put our focus on God, renew my mind. Change the way I think. Help me to focus on Your Word. Help me to focus on where You're taking me. If we can do that, it will determine the way that we live. Let me define this word for you, vitality. Um, because I honestly, when I was preparing this message, I didn't know a lot about the word vitality, but this is what it means. It says, it's your capacity for survival or for the continuation of a meaningful or purposeful Existence. Let me read it one more time. A capacity for survival or for the continuation of a meaningful or purposeful existence. How many of you want a meaningful and purposeful existence? Amen. Well, your focus determines how meaningful and how purposeful it's going to be. Where you put your focus. What are you focused on today? Are you focused on the fact that maybe you don't have it all together? And the fact that yesterday you really just blew it? Last week, I met a lady down front here um, who she said, Kyle, I've just blown it. I've just messed up. And I've messed my life up. And she said, I don't know how to get it back. And the only thing that I can tell her is that the Lord loves you just as much now as He did before you messed up and you blew it. And if you continue to focus on yesterday, guess where you're going to live? In yesterday. You'll never get to what God has for you today. And I don't know about you, but I want to live a life that's going forward. Amen. I believe life's meant to be lived in one direction, not backwards. And where you focus determines how meaningful and how purposeful your life's going to be. Amen? Amen. Secondly, our mindset determines our ability to please God. Raise your hand if you want to please God with your life. Well, Paul says this in Romans 8, verse 7 and 8. He says... The simple mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor does or nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature, what? Cannot. Please God, those controlled by the sinful nature. In other words, when something has control over you, it runs your life. Every aspect of it. And when you're controlled by a sinful mind, a carnal mind, a thing that all a mind that only thinks about the world and what the world's standards are and about what so and so said, when you begin to think about those things, you cannot please God. Why? Because you're not focused on what he wants for you. That's right. And I believe that God wants to take your mindset, this is worth writing down, God wants to take your mindset through a mind shift. That's right. God wants to change the way that you think. God wants to renew your mind. And many of us have mindsets that were, that were formed from our childhood, from the people around us, from our parents. And we never started to think on our own the way that God wants us to think. A lot of times the, right, the way that we think is based on what, what we read, what we listen to. And in America, we listen to some junk, don't we? I just got some speakers put in my truck. The first thing I did was went out and bought a rap CD. Do I even look like I listen to rap music? Yes. And she said, yes, I do. <laughs> um, but man, I've been bumping this week, you know? This is a bump. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> and I pull up and people are like, my God, it's a skinny white boy getting out of this truck. He <laughs> belongs in this truck. <laughs> Smiling right on by. But what we listen to determines how we think, don't we? Mm -hmm. When all we listen to is sex, drug, and alcohol, what do we want to do? Let's be real about it. We want to have sex, and we want to drink alcohol, and we want to do drugs, and we want to do whatever that song's talking about. And it's easy to listen to that all week and come in church and lift our hands, isn't it? It's so easy for us to do it. But five or, or ten or fifteen, maybe even twenty minutes on Sunday morning can't cover up when, what you've been listening to all week. That's right. And what you feed the most is going to end up winning the battle. It's time that we rise up as the mighty men and women of God and say, I'm not going to listen to that junk anymore. I'm not going to live this way anymore. I'm going to quit watching that kind of stuff. 
And some of you in the room today, maybe you're dealing with something that, that no one else knows about. Maybe at night you're on that computer and nobody else knows about it. Your spouse doesn't know about it. Your kids don't know about it. But listen, here's the day. The Bible says this, that what done, what's done in the dark will eventually come to light. And eventually God's going to uncover what you've been trying to cover. That's right. But if you will uncover it, if you'll come clean about it, and you'll say, God, I need your help, God will cover it. That's God, in other words, will say, you know what, I'm going to help you get rid of it. I'm going to remove that from your life. And not, not even just with pornography. Maybe it's some other addiction that you have. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, when you begin to reach out and say, God, i got to have you and I need some help, and you reach out to the body of Christ and say, hey, I need somebody to come alongside of me and help me, Amen. God honors that. And He'll pull you up out of it. Amen? Because Amen. He wants you to please Him. And when your mind is sinful and it's all you think about, you can't, you can't please Him because you're not focused on what He wants for you. What does God want for you? Jesus said that I've come that you might have what? Life. Life. And that you might have it more abundantly. In other words, to the full, to the max. Everything you can have. I'm not talking about material possessions. I'm talking about whatever that purpose and that thing is that God wants for your life. I want you to have it to the full. That's why I came. But the Bible also says that what? The enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and you've got these two constantly competing for your mind the enemy and God battling to see who's going to win and I don't know about you but I want God to win the battle I want to think right I want to think good thoughts if you think that I can get up here every week and I can preach and I got it all together and I don't think bad thoughts you're crazy <laughs> let's be real I'm a 23-year-old single guy. That's right. Okay? If I'm being honest, yeah, I do have bad thoughts, but here's the deal. I don't want to. How many of us we have them and we don't want to? Right. And some of y'all, if you're like me, you think, oh God, if somebody knew I had that thought right now, woo, what would they think about me? Anybody? Come on, y'all be real with me up in here. I'm being just as real as I can with you. It's tough. But more and more as you get into God's Word and you begin to pour in. To, here's the thing. Garbage in, garbage out, baby. Whatever you put in is coming out. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in you will eventually come out of you. So whatever you're putting in, whatever your mindset is, begin to focus on God's Word and what He's calling you to. It will determine how great your life is. Amen? Amen. <clears throat>